one of the great Lent devotions as we continue our journey to the climax of the celebration of our Lord's Passion, Death and Resurrection is the devotion known as the Way of the Cross, the Via Dolorosa, Via Crucis, the Stations of the Cross. For devotees of Divine Mercy, the Stations of the Cross must hold a particular place of importance. When our Lord revealed to St. Faustina his desire for the celebration of the Hour of Mercy, that 3 p.m. hour each day, that we can immerse ourselves into the very depth of the love of Divine Mercy towards us, one of the first areas that he suggested as a way to observe the Hour of Mercy was through praying the Stations of the Cross. Many of us are used to what we call the 3 p.m. prayer, you expire Jesus and O blood and water. Many will say the chaplet of Divine Mercy at the Hour of Mercy. Here in my own parish, the bell goes at 3 p.m. announcing the Hour of Mercy. But the very first prayer that the Lord Jesus suggests as the most suitable way for observing the hour of mercy is actually the Stations of the Cross. As we know, this particular devotion takes some time, but we are also able to have other alternatives. Our Lord says, if time permits, to step into the chapel and to adore our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, or even for a brief moment to immerse oneself in his agony and passion. The Stations of the Cross are a beautiful devotion, not just for Lent, but are a devotion which helps us to fully understand the journey of love, because that is what is revealed to us in the Stations. Each time we stop, and pause at those 14 stations. We are given so beautiful insights into the immense love of our Lord. We see his condemnation, we see his falls, we see the assistance from our Blessed Lady, his mother, Saint Simon of Cyrene, Saint Veronica, the women, and of course then the unfolding brutality of the execution itself from the Roman soldiers with the stripping of our Lord, his nailing to the cross, and of course, that ultimate act of his side being pierced and that blood and water flow out. And so as we continue our Lenten reflections, it is good for us to see how in these stations there are some beautiful little booklets and devotionals which have been put together from the writings of St. Faustina, which speak to us from the diary of most of these particular events. Because as we know from the diary, St. Faustina was given a wonderful, wonderful mystical insight into the various aspects of the Passion. She herself tells us that she was able to mystically experience the wounds of Christ, that she was able to be at the various events of the Passion as they unfold. And indeed, our Lord says to her in reply that the comfort and the knowledge that St. Faustina was going to reflect and pray and meditate upon these particular acts of suffering of his would be an immense consolation to him. And so in our desire to console our Lord, in our desire to come closer to him, to journey more and more faithfully with him, then we have the beautiful Stations of the Cross to help us. Our Lord said to St. Faustina, a reflection on that first station, as he himself was the first to be condemned, to be condemned unjustly, the innocent one. And therefore, no one should be surprised if they too are unjustly condemned, because the Lord himself has undergone this particular act for us. And we see here this great humility of the Lord. 
St. Faustina often referred to the Passion as a book. It is one of the best books that help us to fully understand the love of the Lord Jesus. And as we may use one of the Stations of the Cross booklets, which have been prepared with reflections from the diary, we can see the immense, immense desire of St. Faustina to model her own life on her suffering Lord. And that, of course, is the model for each one of us. When we say that we are undertaking our Lenten practices, our Lenten resolutions, we know that they have three areas, prayer, fasting and almsgiving, the works of mercy. But often we refer to these as acts of mortification. That great word mortification, of course, comes from the Latin word to put to death, morte, death. And so as we undertake our Lenten resolutions, as we follow the Lord's way of the cross, we see there a reflection of our own lives, how are we putting to death in our body the sins that separate us and stop us following more closely our Lord? St. Faustina helps us to realise in her reflections how each day, as she tells us, I begin my day with a battle, with a struggle. And it will be for all of us a struggle to come closer and closer to the Lord, to put to death, to mortify ourselves so that the image of the Lord may be revealed in us. That is why in the diary she is able to write, as many of you will see in your own copies of the diary, she writes the words, my will, and then she puts the cross through it. The cross, which is that sign of contradiction, my will, and the will of God, thy will be done. The, the agony of the passion, of course, begins on Holy Thursday. Our Lord in the garden who says those same words that often are on our lips, not my will, but thy will be done. And therefore our devotion to the stations of the cross will help us to enter more and more deeply into the passion of our Lord. For many of us who like to observe the hour of mercy, it is good for us to think how we can incorporate the stations of the cross into the observance of the hour of mercy at 3 p.m. One of the ways that I personally try to remember and to undertake is to set two weeks ahead and each day because two weeks is 14 days, one day for each station of the cross. So that at the hour of mercy, I'm then able to recall. So for example, on a Sunday, I will think of the first station, Jesus is condemned to death. Then on the Monday, the second station, Jesus receives his cross. On the Tuesday, Jesus falls the first time. And so we are able then, first week, we would have contemplated seven scenes from the stations. We can then begin another week and have the next seven. And this way is one of the wonderful ways in which we can, throughout the year, not just for Lent, but we can consider the great depth of the love of our Lord being made present in that journey of love. Let us therefore ask St. Faustina to help us to go deeper, help us to penetrate into each of those particular scenes as they unfold, because each one of them speaks to us not only of the agony of the Lord undertaken out of love for us, but that of his immense divine mercy, which he wishes us to receive and, of course, to share with others because each one of us will have opportunities to be a Simon of Cyrene, to be like Our Lady, to be like Veronica. Because when we understand the selfless love of the Lord in his way of the cross, then what we receive, we also wish to pass on. These wonderful characters of the stations help us to realize that we too must support others 
in their way of the cross, to be with the one who falls, to be with those who need comforting, to offer through the works of mercy, which, of course, our Lord has told us there are three ways, through our words, through our deeds, and, of course, our prayer, always and everywhere. We can pray for mercy for all those who are carrying heavy crosses in life. That lovely prayer, we adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. That would be a beautiful prayer for us to add as we keep the hour of mercy, so that as we grow day by day and deepen our understanding and our appreciation of his mercy, we can see how the work of redemption, the journey of redemption that we celebrate in the stations helps us to die to self, to rise again and to reveal to the world through our kindness and works of mercy the presence of the risen Lord. Bye.